Well, hello everyone and welcome to our conversation today. My name is Osei Obonen and I'm one of the pastors here in Mavuno Church, Uganda. A big shout out to all our campuses in Uganda, Mavuno Gateway, all the way in Entebbe, you guys rock, Mavuno 360, all the way in Kabalagala. God bless you guys. And to you who has joined us this morning, you are most welcome. I am so happy, I'm privileged, and I'm honored to be bringing God's word to you today, and I do not take that privilege for granted. And my prayer for you this morning is that you will encounter God as we have this conversation, you and your families. Yes, we are still going through the series Family Matters, and this is week seven of this series where we are winning freedom for our families, I hope you have been learning a lot. I hope the Lord God has been ministering to you. I hope you have met with him uh, throughout these weeks. Allow me to start by telling you something I saw uh, while preparing for this conversation today. It is one of the Red Table editions. Uh, I, I know many of you watch Red Table, yeah? Yeah, by uh, Jada Pinkett Smith and her, her mom and her daughter. So this particular one was an interview of... Bobby Brown, yes, Bobby Brown, where he was talking about his relationship with Whitney, and he summarized his relationship in this sentence. He said, we met, we, we fell in love, and at the center of our relationship was drugs and other forms of abuse. He said their relationship was the best thing until it became the worst thing. We all know the tragic uh, story of this couple, uh, they got married, they broke up, Whitney died of a drug overdose, uh, their daughter, Bobby Christina, also died of a drug overdose, and a son, Bobby, Bobby Brown's son, Bobby Brown Jr., died of an overdose, a mixture, they call it a cocktail of drugs, he died of a drug overdose, and a, a young man who Whitney had adopted when he was t uh, 12, Gordon, Nick Gordon, he died of a drug overdose as well, and so... Many other stories like that. Our greatest pop icon, Michael Jackson, also died of a drug overdose. Who else? Many people that we can name. DMX, yes, died of a drug overdose. Uh, and it's such a sad, sad story. And it, it brings me to the point of just wondering what might have been happening in these situations. May God rest these souls. Now, it is my desire that as we start off today, that... I'm able to point out something very important to us. My, my, I am not trying to make us sad or make us feel bad. My desire is to point out something very uh, strong to us today. Now, let's go back on the statement that he made. He said it was the best thing. His relationship, Bobby Brown was saying this, that his, his relationship with Whitney was the best thing until it became the worst thing. And that could be the mantra of for any addiction, any addiction. That is how it's, it's always said. It, is, it started on a good note and then it became the worst thing that ever happened to me. Addictions come in many forms and not only addiction to drugs. Let's take a step back and just talk about addictions and, and what they really are. To put it simply, an addiction is a dependence on a substance or a pattern of behavior to meet an inner need. There are generally two types of addictions. The first is addiction to a substance, a substance addiction, where one becomes dependent on chemicals to meet their needs. Examples include alcohol, drugs, which could also, these drugs could be illegal, like cocaine, like marijuana, or they could even be legal, like nicotine, you know, the cigarettes that we see people smoking, or prescription drugs. Maybe you, you were given certain painkillers or antidepressants, and before you knew it, you became addicted to it, or you could not stop taking it. Or one could even become addicted to sugars and caffeine in coffee, tea, some even uh, some soft drinks, Coca-Cola, all those other products contain a certain amount of addictive sugars. There's another type of addiction, which is a behavioral addiction, where one becomes dependent on a certain behavior repeatedly. You keep doing that behavior repeatedly to calm feelings or to help them feel good about themselves. Many times, these behaviors increase the level of adrenaline and other hormones in the body, providing a rush, a rush, a feel-good 
uh, feeling for that person. Such behaviors could also include gambling, working, overworking, you know, shopping, internet use, TV, crime, and even sex. Let's, let's talk about the causes of addictions. Addictions can be caused by external factors. For example, someone may innocently uh, take a prescribed medication only to realize later that they are now dependent on it. Or a child could be, by, could be introduced to alcohol by a parent, you know, unknowingly, and later on in life they find they, couldn't, they have not been able to stop drinking. You know, those, <laughs> I remember my dad used to do it. He would put his finger in the cup of alcohol and stick that finger in our mouth and be like, mm, nice. And later on, we, we struggled, <laughs> you know, stopping those habits. Or a child could be introduced to sex early on in life, maybe through an abuse or just even watching porn together. Some addictions come about by, uh, as a result of uh, internal factors as well. A person is trying to meet a strong internal need, such as a need to fit in. You are extremely self-conscious or timid, and you, you, uh, uh, you find it difficult to be accepted by others, so you get uh, addicted to a certain pattern of behavior, or you, you take alcohol just you know, to have the guts to, to, to stand up in public, or you take... Will I say, like, uh, let me not say, yeah, you take marijuana just so that you can have that feel-good feeling or be bold enough to, to stand before people. Or you could even be taking these things to relieve stress, anxiety at work or anxiety of life. You know, some, also, some people also need these things to forget trauma, you know, to manage stress, to, to forget pain or loneliness. For some others, it's just the need for, for control. They want to do what they want, how they want, when they want it, and wh where they want it. This can be the, the, the case also for, for people who have multiple sex partners, people who want to be in control. You find that they also have multiple sex, sexual partners because they, may, they might have been hurt, and at that time when they were hurt or abused, they felt vulnerable or weak. And so right now, they use these multiple sex partners to gain control of their lives. Each sexual encounter for this person helps them to feel in charge of their lives and their relationship, and they find that they can't stop doing it. Now, regardless of the addiction that we, we find in our society or that we have gotten into, the addiction cycle is exactly the same. The cycle begins with a rush, an emotional or physical high or feeling of well-being when the person first experiences the stimulant. After a little while, this high, it declines, resulting in an emotional low, or a hangover, guilt, or remorse. The next stage after this is desire. The person is left with a longing to try it again, to try that experience again, to try the stimulant again, just to get back on that high, to recreate that rush. And if they succumb to this desire, they succumb to this need, this wanting to do this experience again, they find out that they have developed a habit. And before you know it, this pattern continues. And as a pattern continues, you, your body, that person's body begins to want more or higher doses of this stimulant to, you know, to uh, continue getting this high. And when the, the line of dependence is crossed, this person doesn't know. And to get out of it, it becomes really, really hard. The person experiences psychological or physical withdrawal, just trying to get out of this. You see, the, the danger with addictions is that they are weapons of self-destruction. They have the power to sabotage our purpose, the, our God-given purpose and plan on planet Earth. Self-sabotage, our God-given plan and purpose on earth. That's why today I'm naming this sermon or this conversation, Weapons of Self-Destruction. Let's read our scriptures for today. From John, John 4, verse 4 to 24. Are we there? Get out your gadgets, get out your uh, your computers, whatever you have. If you have a hard copy Bible, very, very good. <laughs> Get it out. Let's read this together. John 4, 4 to 24. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. 
Although, in fact, it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So he left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? Verse 8, his disciples had gone into town to buy food. Then the Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? <laughs> for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is, that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, verse 11, Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as did also his sons and his livestock? Can we just take a moment right there and pray before we even continue <laughs> with our uh, conversation today? Bow your heads wherever you are. Dear Lord God, we thank you for your word today. Uh, we thank you for even the opening of your word. We ask that even as we delve into this matter seriously, that almighty God, you will speak to us, that your Holy Spirit will minister to us. We pray that your presence will be felt in our homes, in our living rooms, wheresoever we are right now, that we will experience, Lord God, your power to save, to heal, and to deliver. And at the end of this, that this will be the beginning, Lord God, of great things in our lives, to the glory and honor of your name. And all God's people say... Amen. Yeah, so let's continue. Uh, most of us either know this story from Sunday school or you might have heard of it from different circles. Uh, I don't know, maybe people have used it in seminars or have used it in Christian gatherings. You see, in this story, Jesus is asking this Samaritan woman for a drink of water to quench his thirst. I'm pretty sure that she was thinking to herself, how can someone like you, <laughs> a Jew, be asking me, someone like me, for a drink of water. The situation those days between the Samaritan woman, uh, the Samaritans and the Jews was very, very unusual. Very, very unusual. The Jews did not relate with the Samaritans because they considered them unclean. And so the Samaritans always tried to stay out of a Jew's way every time they, they had the opportunity to. But here is a Jew, Jesus, in all his infinite mercy and power, asking this Samaritan woman, who is considering herself unclean, for water. And Jesus continues having a conversation with her. I think that was the, first thing, the first unusual thing he did was sit by the well, and the second one was even ask for water from this uh, Samaritan woman. Another thing that Jesus asked, said to her, he said, if you knew the gift of God... If you knew the gift of God, you would be asking, you would actually be the one asking me for a drink and I would give you living water. And I'm very, very sure that the Samaritan woman at this point was looking at him and, and wondering, who is this human? Who is this thirsty traveler asking me for water? <laughs> and she even asked, she said, deep well, the well is deep. Do you even have anything to draw water? Do you have a, you don't have a bucket? I don't see a bucket on you. I don't see a pot on you. I don't see anything with you to draw this water. But here you are planning to have water from here. And you are even talking about living water. What's this living water? You know, like most people in Jesus' time, they didn't know anything about Jesus. They didn't even realize who was speaking to them. And you can't blame her. She also, being a Samaritan, she, I, I am very sure that she, never, she had never heard of Jesus up until that point. And there he was, sitting by the well, at an unusual time of the day, asking her for water. But Jesus tries again. He tries again. He says, in verse 13, he says, everyone, Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water, that is that physical water, will be thirsty again, verse 14. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst again. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. 
Jesus right here was not talking about physical water, actual water that we could see. He was talking about a different kind of nourishment. He was talking about a spiritual kind. He was talking about a different kind of sustenance, one that quenches a different kind of thirst. It's not like any other water. Because when you drink regular water, there's, by the time you are drinking it, it is out of your system, and you return to that well to get water. Jesus was talking about a kind of water that bubbles up from the inside of you. That one that you will drink and you will never be thirsty again. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not get thirsty again and have to keep coming back to this well to draw water. I am very sure that this woman was tired of drinking from that well. That well was located not so far away from the Jews. I'm sure she was tired of the staring. I'm sure she was tired of the, of the looks people were giving to her. I'm sure she was tired of just walking back in the heat of the day to get water. At this point of this story, she was now willing to get water. She was willing to try this water out that Jesus was saying, Jesus was talking about. So this Samaritan woman who... I want you to put, because the Bible does not actually tell us the name of this Samaritan woman. So this, this Samaritan woman could have been you, or it could have been me. So I want you to put your name in there. This Samaritan woman was now ready for this drink. She was ready to quench her thirst. Like me, this woman, at this point of her life, was done. She was tired of coming back to a well that was never satisfying her. Because her thirst was not physical. I am like this Samaritan woman. You are like this Samaritan woman. My name is Osayo Boonen, and I thirst. I thirst. I thirst for hope. I thirst for affirmation. I thirst for security. I thirst to be loved. I thirst for acceptance. We all, in one way or another, are spiritually thirsty. There's a God-sized vacuum on the inside of us waiting to be filled. We have tried to satisfy this thirst, to fill this vacuum in all sorts of ways. We have tried food. We have tried caffeine. We have tried sugar. We have tried substance abuse. I have tried porn. We have tried masturbation. We have tried th theft. We have tried fighting brawls. We have tried crime but we haven't succeeded. You see, our thirst is, deeply, is usually deeply rooted in our desire for something deeper. If anyone would care to look closer at this whole situation, they would realize that we, what we are craving for is more than, it is a feeling that, that satisfaction or that emotional rush, that high that we get from, from that addiction than even the substance that we are, that we are using. There's always a sense of momentary relief after we use that substance, after we, we engage in that act of addiction. And that is what we are actually looking for, that fleeting, that fleeting feeling. So it goes way deeper than the substance or the behavior. It goes way deeper than our eyes can see. As a society, as a global society, we are searching for meaning. We live in a time where everything and everything Anything is available to us at the snap of our fingers, but we are still not satisfied. We are thirsty. Thirsty for purpose. Thirsty for a deep connection. Thirsty for community. In a world where there is more than enough to go around, we are still thirsty. We keep drinking from the wrong well with a hope of satisfaction, which doesn't happen and constantly brings us back to the same exact spot where we started, thirsty. When what we really want, what we really need, like the Samaritan woman, what we truly are thirsty for is the living waters of God's spirit, the water of eternal life, life that is full and life that lasts. We are thirsty. We have always been thirsty. We just don't know what it is we are thirsty for. 
We don't know exactly. We can't seem to put our fingers on it, what it is we are, exact, we are looking for. Hmm. But the good news is this, that we don't need to go anywhere to get this living water. It is available to us when we seek it. It is available to all who are ready for it. But the catch here is this. Letting go is never that easy. Letting go of the addiction, letting go of the pain that has resulted in this situation. They need to feel wanted. They need to feel loved. They need to feel security. They need to feel safe. Letting go of that need is not always easy. When we read the scripture, that whole story to the end, you hear the Samaritan woman trying to divert attention from herself like any one of us would have done, like I would have done. She argues her case against the Jews. She says the Jews have always imposed that they have the other people, every other person has to come to Jerusalem to quench their thirst. This is even after she has acknowledged that she had five husbands in the bid, <laughs> in the bid to quench her thirst, she has had five husbands. She, 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 has, she has been there, done that, done everything that she can to quench her thirst. And she, here she is stalling when the Messiah is standing before her. Stalling like every one of us would have done. Like I would have done. She says, change me, Lord, but not today. Can I just hold on to this thirst a little bit? Heal me of addiction, but don't take away the high. But Jesus wanted to heal her at that moment. Just the way he wants to heal us right now. He wanted to deliver her. So he, re he, he reveals himself to her in verse 26. He says, I am the Messiah. How many times have we heard Christ calling out to us like this? Opening his arms and offering hope, offering deliverance, offering freedom from, from that addiction. We hear him in our family when our family members encourage, encouraging us to quit that addiction. When we lose our job due to that addiction, that is God speaking to us right there, telling us, you know, it's time to let go of this thing. It's time to hand it over to me. Jesus gives his answer in verse 23. He says, a time is coming, yet it is here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. What our Lord was telling this lady, was saying to her, and he's saying to many of us today, is that the waters he offers cannot be found anywhere else but in him. In his spirit, who is not limited to any specific time. His spirit is not limited to any specific place. Neither is it limited to language. Neither is it limited to the future or to the past. It is for anyone who seeks to know the truth about themselves. It is for people who are thirsty and are ready to quench their thirst. So are you ready this morning or today, whatever time you are watching, are you ready to quench your thirst? Are you ready to stop drinking from this well of self-destruction? As I conclude today, I want you to know that there is salvation and deliverance from our addictions. There is freedom from dependence on, this, on these wells of self-destruction. And that freedom is found in Christ. But the only way to these things that Christ is offering us is for us to acknowledge and accept that we are thirsty, that we need to, that there's a God-sized vacuum inside of us that needs to be filled by him. And we come willing to embrace these living waters that Christ is offering. This is how we can do this. First, we need to acknowledge that there's a problem. Don't be afraid to confront like Jesus and address the real issues. Why do I keep drinking from this well of self-destruction? Why is this addiction in my family? Why is alcoholism in my family? Why is sexual abuse going on in my family? Why is incest going on in my family? Why is uh, homosexuality going on in my, in my family? We must be willing to acknowledge the problem, that there's a problem. There's a problem right here. It needs to be solved. We must seek accountability. The Bible calls the devil the accuser of our souls. He loves to hold a secret over us. So he would, he would tell us, he would say, you know what, don't share. Nobody needs to know this is only happening to you. If you share, what do people think about you? If you share it, what would they say about you? 
<laughs> but James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Break the secrecy. Bring the darkness to light. You need to share about the issues with someone who can work with you and who can help you. It could be a prayer partner. It could be a pastor in the church. It can be a relative. Or it can even be a therapist, a professional. Yes, go seek therapy. Don't think it's a bad thing. You know, there's an African culture that thinks that therapy is a, is a, is a bad thing. No, therapy is not bad. Go seek therapy. If that's how far you are willing to go, go. Go the extra mile. Open it up. Open it up. Starve the habit. You need to investigate what are the triggers that cause you to go back to that habit, that causes you to go back to that place of self-destruction so that you can know how to deal with them. For some people, it might be stress. It might be loneliness. It might be anxiety. It might be just overworking. It might be boredom. <laughs> the devil is tricky. You need to identify what it is that keeps taking you back to that well and begin to dry that well up. Begin to starve that habit. Find an alter alternative coping mechanism. Maybe you need to go to the gym. Maybe you need to take a walk. Maybe you need to read your Bible more. Maybe you need to take that time and pray more. Recognize what it is and commit it to God's hands and begin to walk towards stopping it. So what's your weapon of self-destruction? What's your weapon of self-destruction? From which well are you drinking from, from constantly? I believe God is calling us to his marvelous light today. His arms are open to save, heal, and deliver us. He says, all who are weary, come to the well of living water. Drink and drink deep, and you will not thirst again. I want to pray for people this morning, for some specific people today who have been drinking from a certain destructive well, a well of pornography, the well of masturbation, the well of alcoholism, the well of drugs, narcotics. If that is you and you have been struggling to get out of it or you think this is the time to get out of it, this I want to encourage you that this is the time for real to, to get out of it, to stop drinking from those well. If that is you wherever you are, I want us to pray together. Please do say this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, you have told us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and not to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. I acknowledge that I have given in to sinful desires which wage war against my soul. Please reveal to my mind the ways that I have transgressed your moral law and grieved the Holy Spirit. I have sinned against your holy law and given the enemy an opportunity to destroy my purpose. I come before your presence to acknowledge my sins and to seek your forgiveness, that I may be freed from the bondage of sin. I renounce my involvement in all sin and claim through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ my forgiveness and cleansing. I cancel all ground that evil spirits have gained through my willful involvement in sin. I ask this in the wonderful and mighty name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's people shout a big Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. I believe God with you. That prayer has been answered and you are freed, you are delivered, you are healed in Jesus' name. Now I want to pray for another category of people, people who do not know the Lord God Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, people who do not have a relationship with Him yet. You have not found a love relationship with Him yet. I want to pray for you wherever you are. I'll pray with you wherever you are that you accept Jesus today. So please say this prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you just as I am as a sinner. I come in repentance of my sins. I acknowledge that I have strayed from your path. And I ask today that you will wash me with the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ today as my Lord and personal Savior. I accept the Holy Spirit as my friend, keeper, and comforter. I accept the love of the Almighty God into my heart. In Jesus' name I have prayed. 
Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you people. Thank you so much. If you have prayed that prayer of repentance and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior into your heart today, I want you to reach out to us with this number on the screen, 07899506602. Please reach out to us. We would like to pray with you. We would like to walk this journey with you. If you also need prayer in any way, for whatsoever reason, you want uh, to be connected again with Christ in any way, please do reach out to us with this same number. There's a pastor on the other side waiting to pray with you, to have a conversation with you, and to just walk this journey with you. I want to also invite each and every one of us, especially those who have just said those prayers with me, to the family night happening this Wednesday, a time where we just connect with each other, where we get deeper into God's word, and where we also pray with each other as a church family and as families that make up the church. This Wednesday at 7 p.m. for just 30 minutes, we will be delving deeper into God's word. So don't miss it. Uh, looking forward to seeing you. So can I just bless you as you go into the week? Stretch forth your hands. May the Lord God bless you this week. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he watch over you and everything that concerns you. May his love be, be felt in your homes. May he overwhelm you with his love and his presence to the glory and honor of his name. See you on Wednesday. We pray all this in Jesus' name. We have prayed and God's people shout a big amen. Go into your week and be fearless. See you on Wednesday, people. Amen. Wow, thank you so much, Pastor Osai, for that word. We are so excited for the message that you have been able to share with us today. In our today's world, addiction is such a big thing that people are dealing with. In secret, in open, it is just it's, it's everywhere. So I know that this message is very important. So at least each of us out there, I want us to take a minute to think about a person who has struggled or is struggling, and I know each of us know somebody. So take a minute and share this link with them because this might be their moment that they might find their freedom. You're never the person that delivers the, the healing. You're never the person that delivers the freedom. But Jesus always expects us to be the person that brings them, that connects them. And that is our only duty here. So sharing that link is for you to be able to connect somebody. Just share the link and let them experience the love of Jesus through this message. We love you so much. We hope you have enjoyed this service. Enjoy your Sunday. We, have, we hope you have a lovely week and God bless you out there. See you on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Bye.